again, let's just take a quick look. I said draw a line underneath it and then add them. Now this is just a different technique. It's called the addition method, not a substitution. All right, now why am I able to just add them? Because when I add them, these two variables do what to each other? Yeah, they just cancel out. All right, look how simple that was. Now, what's 2y minus 9y? And then 0 minus 28. There you go. And now all we do is divide both sides by negative 7. So y is equal to what? 4. Since y is equal to 4, now you're going to take this and substitute it in for that y right there. What's 2 times 4? 8. So now I have 4x plus 8 equals 0. So x equals what? Negative 2. Negative 2. So the solution is? Eight. Negative 2, 4. Come on, just relax for a second. Just follow along with me. All right? Is everybody okay with y equals 4? Yes. <coughs> what? Where do you get, why do you divide 7 and 28? Like, why did you choose 4 to divide that? I didn't. Or 7. I solved that equation, oh, kid. I'm sorry. That's all I did. I just solved that equation. Agreed? Yeah. All right. Oh, let's go back. Um, just what? Why do you get the negative 2? Seriously, guys, we're solving this equation, 4x plus 8 equals 0, right? That's it. Yeah, that's all. All right. Now, the solution is x and then y. So the x coordinate was negative 2. The y coordinate is 4. What does that mean? That means if I were to graph those two lines, they would intersect at what two point or at what point? Negative two. That's all that means. All right, it's just a different technique. It's just a different technique. That is it. But, all right. So now let's take a look at number two. I'll give you thirty seconds. Draw a line underneath it and add it. When I add it, what do I get? Negative 16x is equal to negative 32. So x is equal to what? 2. Now that I have x equals 2, plug it in. Does it matter which one? No. All right, I'm just going to plug it in here. And so that becomes what? Negative 14 plus y equals negative 10. So y is what? 4. So my answer is? 2 comma 4. Alright, Sam. Everybody agreeing with me? That's kind of easy, right? Yes. Alright, very easy. Alright, obviously it gets a little harder as we go down the page. Yes, sir. So on the past break and addition class, we have to do a, like addition and elimination. And yeah, what I do is I do Two problems by graphing, two problems by substitution, two problems by elimination, and then I give you like 20 and say do it however you want. All right? So you can do it however you want. All right? And then you're supposed to do what with your calculator? Check. Check them all, and then you can make 100. All right? It's really simple. It's really simple. All right? But you just have to learn the techniques. All right? So now let's look at number three for a quick second. Alright. Am I looking at number three? So what happens? Yeah. And you end up with not with zero equals what? If zero equals negative nine, that's not a true statement. Therefore, it's no solution. Now we already talked. If there's no solution, that means the lines must have been what? Parallel. The lines must have been parallel because a solution is where they intersect. 
And because there is no solution, that must mean that they are parallel lines. All right, did I go to that? All right. Now, what I made my other algebra class was is practice writing in y1 and y2. All right, so what I want to do is I'll, I'm just going to erase this real quick. All right, and I want everybody to write y1 equals, and I want everybody to write y2 equals. y1 equals, y2 equals, and now someone brave to tell me what y1 would be. Morty. Um, parentheses negative 22 plus 9x, close parentheses divided. You are amazing. Anna, what about y2? Um, this one right here. Look. Solving that. Oh. Um, y equals, um, minus nine x plus nine x Thank you. Perfect. Now, please just type those in the calculator just for practice. All right. You should have done it close to 30 times. All right, so now we're going to do it another 30 times. All right. And then when you look at it, you should be able to tell that they are what? Parallel. Does everybody see it? Parallel. All right. Just practice for a second. You may have any questions. Really, that's not hard, right? Not hard. All right, so now what I want to do is. Hold up a second. Yeah, let's, let's look at number. Yeah, some of you are trying to find a point of intersection. You're telling the calculator to find a point of intersection, and it can't. That's why it's telling you there's an error. All right? Now, everybody take a look at number four, please. Everybody take a look at number four. <laughs> Now what's happening here? Right, so you end up with zero equals zero. All right, now please, you have to understand this now. Just listen for a quick second. All right, if zero equals zero, that means that is the same line. All right, you're actually graphing the same line. So it's not all real numbers. All real numbers means anything works. All right, so I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to say I graph the line, and then I graph the second line, and what do I notice? It's the same line. So we say how many points of solution, or how many solutions are there? There are what? Very good. There are infinite number of solutions. There are infinite number of solutions. We don't say all real numbers. Or we say there's an infinite number of solutions. Right? Because they're always touching. Right? Now it's not every number that touches. And let me make sure I'm clear on that. This number over here, is that a solution? No. No. Is this a solution? No. That's what I mean, right? This is a solution. This is a solution. This is a solution. All of the points that are on the line are an actual solution. All right? We just can't name them. There's an infinite number of solutions. Is everybody okay with that? It's yes. the same line. When you graph the same line, it's an infinite number of solutions. If you graph parallel lines, it is no solution. Other than that, it's one solution. Yes? Uh, so is there a special sign for that? No. No, there isn't. You just write infinite number of solutions. All right, there should be. All right. All right, so let's briefly or quickly take a look at number five. That should be pretty easy for you to look at, right? Flush. So everybody again see it's kind of nice. They do what to each other? They cancel out. Does zero equal negative six? No, so we say that they are what? 
We say they're parallel lines. All right. Now, everybody should look at number six real quick and say that's kind of a silly problem. What is it? Well, more importantly, I want you to look at that and say. No, you're not understanding me. Stop talking now. I'm looking at this. What's true about those two lines? They're the same line. You're not adding. You're not subtracting. You're making an observation. Come on, that's silly. 5x minus 15, or 5y equals negative 15. 5x minus 5y equals negative 15. It's what? Same. The same line. All right, that's what I want everybody to observe. Number six, same line, infinite number of solutions. All right, it's the same line, infinite number of solutions. What? It's the same line. If I change the signs, now it's the same sign. Same line. All right? I'm just showing you those are the different choices. All right? Now what I want to do is I want to take a look at number eight. All right. Now I have to actually teach you something. All right, so look up. Can I add these? You could add them, but you're not eliminating a variable, right? So the problem here is that if this is negative 3, I want this to be a what? So what do I have to do? Yeah, so when you say change the sign, you mean I'm going to multiply the top equation by what? Negative 1. All right, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 1. The reason why I'm going to change the top equation by negative 1, or I'm going to multiply by negative 1, is because now I end up with 3x minus 3y equals 12. Now what happens when I add them? 1 will cancel out. All right, so this cancels out. So now I have... 6y equals 12. Wrong. 6y equals negative 12. negative 12. All right, it's so easy to make a careless mistake. That's why I'm telling you guys, you have to be careful. Write neat. I don't want you writing so big that you can't fit the information in here. All right, get control of your handwriting, some of you. All right, write small, in control, so I can read it easily. And so now what does y equal? Now that y equals negative 2, I can substitute negative 2 into any of the equations. I can substitute it into any of the equations. I'm just going to plug it into the top one right here. So now I get negative 3x minus 6y, I'm sorry, minus 6 equals negative 12. Does everybody see that? Easy. Now... Am I expecting you to be able to look at that and just tell me what the answer is? Yes. yes. X is equal to what? Two. two. Right, X equals two. Do we agree? Yes. Right, because I think you guys can mentally do negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. If not, you're behind. All right? But I don't mind explaining it. Or if you're not seeing something, you've got to let me know now. What's the matter? How do you get a positive 2 in the negative 6? No, no one's asking you. What? Well, see, so you read the 6 over by adding 3. Right, so that's what? Oh, it's 6. Yeah. All right, so you might have any questions. So my answer is 2, comma, negative 2. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to check. All right, so y1 is equal to, Mr. Stauffer, tell me what y1 is. Uh, y1 is the uh, negative 12 um, 
Oh, parentheses, negative 12 plus 3x is, um, and then divide by 2. Good job. Y2, tell me. Y2 equals parentheses negative 24 plus 3x and parentheses divided by 2. Beautiful. Now, just check that on the calculator to make sure I'm right. All right? Check on your calculator to make sure I'm right. I'm telling you guys, you need practice using your calculator. I see some of you, you know, where's your calculator? Come on, we'll go get it. Come on, don't sit there and watch everybody doing work. Who else is on the calculator today? Very good. Everybody happy with that? No, that's not bad, right? It's not bad. All right. Here we go. All right. Now I'm going to skip number ten, but I want someone to tell me what I could probably do. Tell me. Yeah, multiply the top equation by negative one. All right. And now we're moving on. All right. Just make yourself a note there. Multiply by negative one. That's the same problem. Okay, now everybody take a look at number 12. All right, this is the one where we have a slight problem. Slight problem. All right, someone give it a shot. What do I do? Um, you do. Um, no. Thank you. What am I doing, Jude? Oh, yes, you do. Tell her, AC. Um, you're adding x to negative 5. No. Oh, thank you. Um, you are. Stop, stop. Wow. Oh, here we go. Listen up, please. No. Tell us. Are you adding? No. Subtracting. Let's just say a word now, Mo. What? Multiplied by three. What? Five. Three. Don't let them change your. What are you multiplying by? Mm -hmm. Multiplying by three. Which one? Uh, that entire bottom. Yeah, brilliant. There yes. you go. Don't say why. Process of elimination. Multiply the bottom down. by three. Oh, now, Zayden, tell us why. Thank you for that brilliant. Oh. No one's talking to you. <laughs> because you need one of the variables to be just canceled out. You need one of them to be canceled out. God, and this is a six. It would be nice if this were. Negative six. It would be nice if it was negative six. Uh, so to make it negative six, I just multiply by three. three. I could have also multiplied the bottom equation by what? Five. Tell us, Watson. By what? Five. five. Brilliant. If you multiply by five, the x's will cancel out. If you multiply by three, the y's will cancel out. Do I care? No. no. Forty. 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 Come join my sixth grade class today. Be quiet. All right, here we go. I understand your excitement, though. All right. It's like kind of like playing basketball, right? All right. So we're gonna multiply by three. When I multiply that by three, that becomes. 3x minus 6y equals 5, and I'm just going to bring down the other equation. That's what I said. 15. <laughs> no, I said 15. Yes, delete my video. All right. So now we multiply by 3. And when we multiply by 3, now we can do what? Yeah. Add. So I end up with? Negative 2x equals negative 2. So? X equals 1. X equals 1. Brilliant. X equals 1. 
Now we have x equals 1. Does it matter what equation? No. No, just like pick one. All right? So we'll say 3 minus 6y equals 15. In other words, I put the 1 in up here. Okay? So y is equal to negative 2. So the solution would be 1 comma negative 2. Now listen. Again, hey, uh, all kidding aside, now look, it has to be that easy for you. It just should be that easy. All right, if you're still not quite sure what we're doing, or if you're a little behind, you got to speak up. All right, I mean that for everybody. All right, I think everybody should be able to make a test, or 100 on their test next Friday, because I'm going to give you about 20 problems, and you're going to be allowed to use your calculator. You're going to have to solve, but then you can check every single one. Everyone should make 100, but guess what? Hardly anybody does because they don't go back and check the work because they think they're always right. Check your work. All right, always check. All right, now my question is, is there a problem with that being 1, comma, negative 2? No. Now listen, I don't care about plugging it on the calculator to check your work because the answers are even on the back of the page. I'm just trying to convince some of you if you're not good at checking your work or you're not good at plugging into the calculator, you have to practice. Practice it over the weekend. Yes, ma'am. It makes a difference if you put the top equation on the bottom. Makes no difference. Of course not. Makes no difference. All right. We can all do it a little bit what? Differently. But we'll all get the what? Same okay. answer if your math is good. All right, if your math is good. All right, let me let me look at something here. Um, so let's take a look at number 14. What do I have to do in number 14? Tell us. Um, you have to multiply the top equation by 2. By what? Negative two. Negative two. Or we could multiply the top equation by, come on, Bo, by what? Negative 10. Negative 10. Now, I'm trying to convince you one has to be positive and one has to be what? Negative. negative. Right? So if they're both positive, you got to multiply through by a negative. You want them to cancel out. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Anybody have any questions? All right. So your homework is to try to do um, 1 through 20. All right, everybody's doing 1 through 20. All right, if you work hard enough, you may not have that much homework. All right, get busy. Yes, of course you can. All right, guys, get busy. Good job, good job, good job. And again, if you're struggling with the calculator, practice with the calculator, but the answers are where? On the back. So go ahead, double check that first, all right?